Kim Jong-nam was born on May 10, 1971 in Pyongyang, North Korea. As the eldest son of Kim Jong-il, who was the leader of North Korea at the time, Kim Jong-nam was initially seen as a potential successor to his father's leadership. He was groomed for political leadership and received an education in Switzerland. However, Kim Jong-nam's prospects for succession began to decline due to various factors. One significant incident was his 2001 attempt to visit Tokyo Disneyland in Japan using a forged Dominican Republic passport under the pseudonym Peng Xiong, Chinese for fat bear. This embarrassing episode caused a considerable scandal and damaged his reputation within North Korea. Additionally, Kim Jong-nam was known for his more liberal views compared to the rigid ideology of the North Korean regime. He was critical of the hereditary succession system and advocated for economic reforms and opening up to the outside world. As Kim Jong-il's health deteriorated in the early 2000s, the focus of succession shifted to Kim Jong-nam's half-brother, Kim Jong-un, who was younger but deemed more loyal and capable of maintaining the regime's control. Kim Jong-nam's criticism of the regime, his perceived lack of commitment, and the embarrassing incidents led to his estrangement from his family and exile from North Korea. After his exile, Kim Jong-nam lived primarily in Macau, where he reportedly lived under the protection of Chinese authorities. Despite being away from North Korea, he remained a potential threat to Kim Jong-un's leadership due to his lineage and connections within the North Korean elite. On February 13, 2017, Kim Jong-nam arrived at Kuala Lumpur International Airport to catch a flight to Macau, where he was residing at the time. As he was preparing to check in for his flight, he was approached by Doan Thi Huang and Siti Aisya, who were disguised as ordinary travelers. The women engaged Kim Jong-nam in what appeared to be a prank or a staged scenario for a hidden camera show. While distracting Kim Jong-nam, the two women allegedly smeared VX nerve agent a highly toxic substance on his face. VX nerve agent is a deadly chemical weapon that disrupts the nervous system and leads to rapid death if exposed in even small quantities. Within minutes of the attack, Kim Jong-nam began to show symptoms of nerve agent poisoning, including severe respiratory distress and convulsions. Airport staff and bystanders quickly realized that Kim Jong-nam was in distress and alerted medical personnel. Despite efforts to rush him to a nearby hospital, Kim Jong-nam succumbed to the effects of the nerve agent within minutes of the attack. His death was officially confirmed later that day. In the aftermath of the assassination, Malaysian authorities launched a massive investigation to identify and apprehend those responsible for the attack. Surveillance footage from the airport and other evidence led to the arrest of Doan Thi Huang and Siti Aisya within days of the incident. Both women were initially charged with murder, facing the death penalty if convicted. The two women accused of carrying out the attack, Doan Thi Hong from Vietnam and Siti Aisya from Indonesia, were apprehended shortly after the assassination. They claimed they were duped into participating in what they believed was a harmless prank for a reality television show. Both women maintained their innocence throughout the trial, stating that they were unaware of the deadly nature of the substance they used to attack Kim Jong Nam. In a surprising turn of events, in March 2019, Prosecutors unexpectedly dropped the charges against Siti Aisha, citing insufficient evidence to proceed with the case. She was subsequently released and allowed to return to Indonesia. The decision raised questions about the integrity of the investigation and the credibility of the evidence presented against her. Following the dismissal of charges against Siti Aisha, Doan Thi Huang pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of causing harm using a dangerous weapon. In April 2019, she was sentenced to three years and four months in prison. But with credit for time served, she was released in May 2019 and deported to Vietnam. Her guilty plea and subsequent release marked the conclusion of the legal proceedings in Malaysia related to the assassination of Kim Jong-nam. Overall, the assassination of Kim Jong-nam was a highly publicized event that raised questions about the reach of North Korean intelligence operations and the security of international airports.